I had never sung like this before. Open, khulla. We felt, we felt together. Dilne bune, I have not heard that bune, that word in my life. Yen kadale, yen kadale, yen kadale, yen kadale, yen na yen na seya pohirai. Such heart-wrenching melodies he gave us. It's because of that, probably that pain that he underwent. Tracking milestones of an incredible journey spanning more than three decades. Rahman Music Sheets. Hi friends, discover the top take as we uncover the wow factor in this episode. Do watch it till the end to grab this musical moment of the day. At Delhi, Lord Louis Mountbatten arrives to take up his appointment as India's Viceroy and Governor General. At a crucial moment in India's history, the 47-year-old grandson of Queen Victoria becomes the 29th and last Viceroy. During his term of office, Britain made the decision to leave India. Now it is for Indian leaders to decide the future of their country. After colonizing India for almost 200 years, British decided to move out by August 1947. Through Karachi streets drives the KD Azam, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Pakistan's first Governor General. It's Karachi's first day of independence, and the crowds are out to greet him and Earl Mountbatten. They also divided India along religious lines. As the new dominions of Pakistan and India take over their own affairs, communal hatred flares up in the Punjab. Fleeing from their looted, blood-stained towns comes a new exodus, a million displaced persons. The partition led to bloodshed, massacres, and a frantic exodus of people across the borders perhaps the largest in human history. 1947 Earth recounts this horror of partition through a group of friends in Lahore. I think that if it's been done, then Lahore will definitely go to Pakistan. Director Deepa Mehta captures the pathos of India's division with cinematic eloquence and emotional depth. Music by A.R. Rahman adds layers to the narrative. Besides being part of this creative process, Srinivas also sang one of the film's iconic songs. So, ye jo zindagi hai, when you listen to this song, you can't even imagine this to be a romantic song but it is used on an intimate sequence in the film please recall its recording how did it evolve how did you get to sing this song it's an amazing song um, but i have to credit javed saab for this you know javed akhtar saab was he loved my voice for some reason i sang a song for um, Jatin Lalit, I think it was Lalit's composition uh, in the film called Raja Ko Rani Se Pyar Ho Gaya. Aao sunne lehero se dhule nag me sapno me ghule nag me aao na aao na so Javed Saab loves this song even today. Whenever I meet him, he tells me, Arey, yaar, oh, gana, kaisa gaya tu? Javed Saab, when he wrote for Rahman Saab, this particular song, 1947, for the lyrics, Rahman asked me to explained this to Javed Saab, the tune, what to write. And in fact, he had, for the hook line, Rahman had put one dummy word. Satya meva jayate satya meva jayate satya meva jayate satya meva. So Javed Saab said, where did satya meva jayate come from? I will write something else, he said. 
and then and then you know there is an opening uh, I, I sang to uh, Rahman sir was there and I sang tara tare tu no no that not that so Rahman had done some nice uh, uh, improvisation so I said he he this is the way it is so Rahman said let him write then we will improvise then Javed sir said no 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 Srinivas ji, you tell me what exactly that is, I'll write in that meter. And that was what? Jo afsane Dil ne bune Dil ne bune Unko Koi dil hi sune the way he wrote that, those lines, still, you know, those. Dil ne bune, I have not heard that bune, that word in my life. Dil ne bune. I had not slept for one or two days. But still, I don't know how Mr. Rahman made me sound so good on that song. Koi dil hi sune. Those days there were no, there was no, uh, the auto tune had not started, nothing else. <laughs> but still, those days also Rahman used to make us sound so perfect and so real, so so beautiful. That song is something very close to my heart, and always th I always thank Javed Saab for whatever he has done for my career. The song has two versions. In one, you have Sujata Trivedi ji, while in the other, you have Mr. Sukhvinder Singh. You are in both of them. Can you just shed some light, the rationale behind having two versions? I think, see, there was one antra that he had made. There was a Punjabi version of the song before that, where I think there was that antra was there. So they wanted that antra also later on. So they. Then they wrote lyrics for that and then that Sujata Trivedi sang. Sir, I want to ask you something. Like this song, there are many songs of Mr. Rahman where chorus, hummings, they become identity of a particular song. What would you say to that? For Rahman, every single thing that he puts into into the song is important just because it is a chorus or a humming it has to be as good as the main stuff it has to sound like that he will not leave you till that is done he will not leave anybody till it's done in fact the best that is what I told you, the best times of my life in, the, in that studio was spent singing chorus. I still remember. I had never sung like this before. Open khulla. So he made that and we were all happy. Mustafa, when he sang the song, but when that came, you, we, we all who was in that room, we felt, we felt together. It was friendship, really. He, he, he literally translates that. Mustafa, Mustafa, don't worry, Mustafa. Kalam Dorin, Mustafa. Srinivas and Rahman, an association that began with Gentleman in 1993. Cemented and elaborated over three decades, the Alliance saw them collaborating for PS2 in 2023. So we all know Mr. Rahman is a composer, is a singer, we have heard about his life. But the way you know him, not many do. The way you can dissect his personality, 
not many can can you unravel the person behind the persona for us i think rahman is a very private person only he knows what he is going through in his life he never lets he's but he is a person who is full of love who wants to give he is a very giving person he doesn't get attached to material at all material at all he has i i have not seen him getting attached to anything and that is an incredible uh, level to reach you know he is almost like a saint that way and he is as a person actually as a person in the studios in the 90s he used to with him and shridhar you know shridhar the sound engineer who passed away i used to watch their camera diary and the way he used they used to joke he, he jokes a lot in the studios in the night he's a very he's got a lot of sense of humor and some of the jokes are on him also it's very difficult to find rahman's ego <laughs> it's not possible he's a that's probably because of the spiritual nature and all that i've seen him come down tired and everything and then he'll go into one room to pray and he'll come out and you suddenly see a transformed person you know he'll be when he plays the keyboard and he's he is all fire so that spirituality is where i think his energy comes from i've never seen him criticize anybody i've never uh seen him prejudiced about any any kind of art or anything he never i've never seen him critical of others and he also doesn't want praise from anybody if he respects some musician he will still give him that space and respect and work with him even if that musician doesn't respect him he is okay with that he doesn't care because he he has genuine respect for musicians genuine respect for everybody that's why he's 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 the one who started crediting backing vocals and musicians today there are so many musicians so so many instrument players who are famous uh, he's the one who earlier we used to wonder who played the flute in uh, some song you know but today you know who's, every everyone is being credited these days rahman started it so as a person i think he is a very affectionate warm and uh, very giving as he said there's no hate in him but he doesn't get he is not a just uh, you cannot get anything from him because you praise him all that you are very good so he is very clear about that he is a he is a very very different person it's very difficult to gauge him you know he is a very he is not your normal kind of person that's because he has gone through so much you know as a child i feel that he has gone through hell he told me once that is after his father died he had to go and play keyboards for big music directors you know and uh, he was he was also being forced on that music that he so he has also as a 12 year old child when the music director says why are you bringing him he can't play he has seen that that is the kind of pain he has undergone to from 12 years in an industry which is unforgiving according to me where nobody really bothers about anybody else he has gone into those studios he been he a child who should have been probably in the in school learning physics or whatever whatever is he is a genius in computers no so he 
he is like if he had uh, probably completed his education also he would have been in the US in the Silicon Valley or something according to me. But he didn't do that. The natural process did not happen for him. He could have played cricket, he would have, he would have at the age of 12, what do you, you are in the studios, you are working with old musicians and who are telling, hey, Nada, what are you playing? That's, so he's gone through so much. And it is that pain which comes out, which came out so beautifully in his music. The best part about him is, sometimes what happens is when you get insulted, and when you achieve, when you are, when you achieve some fame and you are in a position, you give those insults back. He never did that. His spirituality, I think, made him much more evolved. He, he, he. I've never seen him, uh, uh, you know, saying nasty things about anybody. Never. So, it is that pain, earlier pain, that gave us great music also. Like, Yen kaadale, yen kaadale, yenna yenna seyapuhirai. Such heart-wrenching melodies he gave us. It's because of that. Uh, <laughs> Probably that pain that he underwent. He had, he was the sacrificial <laughs> goat for us. <laughs> when you think about it, it's that. That is his greatness. True greatness is that. And he never, once he achieved his fame, he, he didn't, there was nothing like it, no bitterness at all in him. He never talks about that. That's his greatness. Rahman's music dominates lyrics and even vocals. Is that correct? Rahman's songs don't connect with audiences now. Is there a hint of truth in that assertion? Why is there no one like Kishore Kumar? Why Srinivas sees R.D. Burman in Rahman? Musafir, hu yaro. Musafir of Music Srinivas will be back with many answers and anecdotes. Stay with us. <laughs> I've never seen him criticize anybody. He also doesn't want praise from anybody. If he respects some musician, he will still give him that space and respect and work with him. Even if that musician doesn't respect him, he is okay with that. He doesn't care. Because he, he has genuine respect for musicians. Do you agree that this indeed was the moment of the day? Is your choice different? Whatever your mind says, write it in the comments section below. We will be waiting. We re, we re. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, press the bell icon and stay entertained.